Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to another How to Model in Blender tutorial. Over on the Patreon, Brent shared this image with me and asked me how I might approach doing this kind of grill on this old style microphone. And I had a bit of a play this morning and I've come up with one technique, so I thought I'd share that with you. Now, if you're a full access member of the Patreon, you can download the work file with all of my workings and the finished version. So let's get started. I'm just going to hide this one and press Shift A and choose Mesh Icosphere. All right. And what I'll do is I'll delete half of that just in X ray mode, just go into vert mode and delete vertices. Now I want to extrude down the cylindrical microphone shape. But first of all, and very importantly, I have to select this loop and just in loop tools uh, under edit, just space them. It's going to offset them just slightly, but if we don't do that, then when I use the array, it's not going to line up. All right, next is to press E to extrude, then Z and come down three grid spaces because it's about three. So three more. Shift R to repeat. Face mode, select this and P to separate selection. Tab, select that guy and select these. Control I, delete faces. All right. So that's pretty good. So K for the knife. Starting at that vert, then we're going to hold down Shift make sure we cut in the center of that edge there. Cut up to that vert, shift again, and that one, right mouse button, and do the same on the other side. Don't have to hold shift this time because we can snap to that middle vert. All right, grab this loop, and dissolve, face mode, grab these, and delete, okay. All right, so now we're going to use the array. So add modifier, array, and we're going to use object offset so we can turn off relative offset. And we need to create an empty, so shift A, empty, plane axis, and come back and select that guy, ink dropper, select the empty, and now we're going to rotate the empty on the Z like that. Okay. And nine degrees seems to be about right. So then we'll come back to our object and we'll increase the count all the way around boom, to there. So 40. Okay. Perfect. Now just make sure that merge is active. And now we can apply that. So we've still got a separate object there. What we're going to do now is add another array. But this time we're not going to use an object. We're just going to keep it in relative offset. Factor X will make zero, but Z will make minus one like that. Okay. And we'll also merge. So now we can just increase that. Maybe just to there. That'll do. Okay. So let's apply that. Apply, select this one and this one. And we want to control J to join those and create a single object. Select it all again, hit M and merge by distance. And that merges all the overlapping vertices. Come up to item and we're going to increase the mean crease to one. Okay. So that's made them all pink. And what we'll do now is we'll add subdivision surface. And just turn off optimal display and you can see there's my hexagons there. Now the trick to this is after we apply the subdivision surface, we're just going to make that one. We're going to apply that. You can see we've still got that crease selection. So we're going to deselect, click on one of those, choose select similar crease. Okay, that selects all of those. Control X, there they go. 
So that's one way I've worked out that you could create this sort of hexagonal shape. Um, and I thought that was quite a good way. If you can think of an even better way to do that, then let me know. Okay, so face mode, all, I to inset, and you can make that whatever size you like. Just make sure individual is checked, <laughs> otherwise you won't see anything. That looks pretty good. If you want to keep those, you can just press P and separate them as a selection, or you can just delete them. I'm just going to delete faces like that. We're almost done. You can see how that's kept that nicely down the bottom as well. And we're going to add a subdivision surface. That gives us round holes. And we're going to add a solidify modifier. Just increase the thickness slightly. I'm holding down shift like that. And you could also, you know, add a bevel modifier if you wanted to. Add bevel and put a little bevel on there, you know, play around with those settings. But that is basically how I did it. One thing you might want to do, I just want to talk a little bit about the uniformity of these holes. Just turn these off for a sec. You've got a couple here that are a little smaller. You could always select those, and I could leave that turned on. You could always select those and just scale them up. It does decrease the amount of space between the uh, surrounding holes, but from a distance, it's a little less noticeable. I could make that even bigger if I wanted to. I could also, you know, do this top one as well. Scale that out. That's pretty uniform. Pretty happy with that. You don't have to do that one there and the other ones around there. But overall, I think that's a pretty good result. If we have a look at the actual physical one, they're pretty nicely distributed here. They've got less space between them, but you can see they're also fairly squished in places as well. So it's not perfect on the actual um, object. So I don't mind that, um, you know, maybe there's a couple that are slightly different size. But overall, I think that's a really nice result. And I think fairly procedural. It's not, not too bad. So let me know what you think. And um, just to let you know, I'm still working on the AirPod case model. Still working through that. I'll have that ready as a tutorial very soon. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Once again, please come over and support me on Patreon. There's uh, definitely extra things for full access members. And um, you can also join the conversation over there if you have any questions, um, you want me to dive into anything in deeper, or you have any uh, suggestions like this, I'm happy to help you know, full access Patreon members out. Okay, thanks everyone. See you in another tutorial.